Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar uh, for today. Uh, my name is Hong Urbanik. Uh, at the moment I'm working um, in the field of vacuum switching technology um, and generate application for the last eight years. Uh, my team and I, we are responsible for the product development and of course the technical consulting for generator circuit breaker switch gear. Um, and today's webinar will be presented to you by Fabian Rademacher and his topic is about how to estimate a generator circuit breaker switch gear in less than five minutes. Um, and now I will hand over to Fabian. Um, so please welcome Fabian um, for our today's webinar session. Thank you, Hong. Very uh, warm welcome from my side to all the participants who joined from all over the world. My name is Fabian Rademacher. I joined the Demons GBS department back in February 2018 after finishing my master's thesis in electrical engineering at the Technical University of Berlin. Uh, I'm responsible for the application engineering uh, of generator breaking switch gears and generator circuit breakers and also the further development. Today's topic, as Song already mentioned, will be about the, how to estimate the generator circuit breaker rating in less than five minutes. So, we all know the situation when we are having a first indication, or you need a first indication for a switch gear rating, for generator circuit breaker rating, and you do not have any information. So this is getting really difficult also for us. For this point, we have developed kind of a tool which will help you to define your circuit breaker ratings at the very first beginning of the project stage. So this will be the topic of today. Um, what I want to present to you is to give you, first of all, uh, the portfolio elements of, not portfolio elements, but the Siemens VGCBs at the glance. So I want to give you four key figures which are really important for us as Siemens. Then I want to highlight how a GCB can protect your assets. So what is the difference between IEC circuit breakers and IEC IEEE circuit breakers? So the generator circuit breakers. Then I want to introduce you our a GCB online estimation tool, which will give you the generator circuit breaker ratings and the switch gear ratings in less than five minutes. I will highlight the importance of input parameters and uh, I will also introduce our database. So this is actually the basis for the whole tool, which is applicable for you and also accessible for you. And then of course, there is no tool without any exceptions and limitations. I want to go through it and explain it. How, how is it possible or still possible to give you a valid and reliable recommendation for our uh, switch gear and uh, circuit breaker portfolio. And then last but not least, I will give you a conclusion about the whole webinar of today. So let's start with four key highlights for uh, Siemens generator circuit breakers. First of all, Siemens is the, the one and only company who is able to, or who is and who was able to develop a generator circuit breaker having a switching capability of 110 kA. Um, this was only possible because Siemens has more than 40 years of experience in vacuum switching technology. And you have to know that within the Siemens um, company and the, uh, the medium voltage, there is only vacuum um, used in the medium voltage technology. Um, then, all our solutions, so the, the GCBs, the generator circuit breakers, and the GBS, the generator breaking switch gears, are uh, developed and made in Germany. So the generator circuit breaker itself, so the circuit breaker is developed in the switch gear factory in Berlin, and the vacuum interrupting tube is developed in the tube factory, which is on the opposite side of the switch gear factory. And with our portfolio elements of the Siemens GC, uh, GBS department, we can protect your assets up to 500 megawatts. So this is quite challenging, but all of our portfolio elements are type tested and we can give you a reliable recommendation on it. So now you may ask, why do we actually need a generator circuit breaker or can we still use a normal IEC circuit breaker, which is used for distribution um, networks? See, what you have to know is having a generator on the one hand side, or if we go to, to the typical generation network, we have the generator, which is connected via a busbar, an IPB, um, with a generator step-up transformer. 
And in between, we have our generator breaker switch or generator uh, circuit breaker. This depends on our, on our portfolio, also the connection type of it. Um, this is really important to know because uh, in this generation networks, um, the, the circuit breaker is facing multiple challenges, which is not valid for a normal IC distribution circuit breaker. And this can be seen in the next slide. So now you also may ask, can we still use an IEC circuit breaker? Then I have to say no, of course not, because there are other uh, challenges which has to be fulfilled for a generator circuit breaker, which the IEC circuit breaker is not able to fulfill. Okay, first of all, I want to give you uh, some basic information about how a current interruption works. This is the same, totally independent, whether it's an IEC circuit breaker or it's a generator circuit breaker. On the one hand side, well, let's say we, we start at the very first beginning. Um, let's assume we have any kind of fault. We, we have a short circuit current which is flowing. The short circuit current is already, was already detected and at the time of five milliseconds, um, the context starts to separate. So the generator circuit breaker already got the tripping signal, the context starts to separate, and directly at this point, there is um, an arc initiated between our contacts. What will happen then is um, that uh, the arc is initiated, and until the next current zero, um, the arc has to be withstood by the, by the circuit breaker itself. So um, what we have to fulfill with our vacuum switching technology is that the um, heat uh, which is produced by the arc can be withstood by the circuit breaker. So um, having a certain minimum um, arcing time, which is in the range of uh, two to five milliseconds for, for vacuum, means that we need at least five milliseconds to have a valid state to have a, a current interruption process. This means uh, if we have a current zero at 10 milliseconds and the arc is initiated, um, the current will be interrupted at 10 milliseconds. This is the current zero. The contacts uh, have already a certain distance. In this case, um, when the current is interrupted, we have the transient recovery voltage, which, is, uh, which will rise with a certain steepness. This is the rate of rise recovery voltage, which, uh, which is 4.5 kV per microseconds. This is actually pretty large and uh, compared to IC circuit breakers, this is totally, uh, totally different. And that's why this is a first argument why you can, cannot have an IC circuit breaker within generation networks, because IC circuit breakers are tested with uh, less rate of rise recovery voltage as generator circuit breaker for a generator source short circuit current. It is really important not to be able to withstand the arc voltage and the, uh, the arc energy, but also to be able to withstand the transient recovery voltage. So if this is not the case, what will happen then is that we will have uh, restrikes and reignitions. So we have to fulfill that the, um, that the dielectric strength, the recovery of the dielectric strength of our vacuum interrupting tube is higher than the steepness of, uh, that of our TRV. This means, in this case, we would have a valid uh, current interruption. Due to the special characteristics of vacuum, the, the steepness of the TRV is not really critical because we are talking about a steepness of uh, the vacuum of the dielectric recovery strength up to or more than 10 kV per microsecond. So this is act actually pretty high and not a special deal for vacuum. If there's no reignition, no restrike, and we have the current interrupted, we will have a, a valid current interruption process, and um, we have interrupted short circuit current, and we have protected your assets. So now you may ask, of course, we have on the one hand side the IC circuit breakers for distribution switch gears, and on the other hand side we have the heavy duty switch gears as generator circuit breakers or um, circuit breakers for arc furnace applications, but I only want to highlight the generator circuit breaker on the other side. They all have the same task, which is first of all, the sufficient insulation. So we have to fulfill um, 
that there is no um, discharge between the phases. The, the rated voltage uh, need to be restored. Need to be restored. And second, we have to fulfill, or we have to um, the circuit breaker itself needs to have a carrying of continuous current, a, a reliable carrying of continuous current. So this means that we have to reduce um, the ohmic resistance within the generator circuit breaker and the circuit distribution circuit breaker to, to reduce the heat losses. And then last but not least, the third point is that we have a reliable interruption of, the, of any kind of current. So we have to make sure that there's no reignition, no restrike, and the transient recovery voltage is, can also be uh, restored. But as I said, the IEC circuit breakers and the IEC IEEE circuit breakers are not the same. This, is, this can be seen on the next few minutes. Um, we have our generation, or let's assume a generation network. So we have a fault, a short circuit location between our GCB and our uh, generator step-up transformer. So what is actually happening um, in generation networks? Or what, what is a special characteristic in it? It is a highly inductive circuit. We have a very short connection of the generator and the generator step of transformer itself. Then we have also only a very low earth impedance, uh, low earth capacitance. And um, we have an immediate vicinity to the generator. So it's pretty narrow, pretty close to each other. So the, the major influence is actually coming from the inductances and a very small part only of um, ohmic resistances. So if you assume the a fault location between the generator circuit breaker and the generator step-up transformer means for a, a short circuit current that we have actually two sides or two, two parts of short circuit currents depending on the fault location. And the, the short circuit current can be either fed from the generator step-up transformer, which can be seen here. So what is so special for it? Actually nothing. Because this can be um, compared to any short circuit current which is in the distribution network. So we have a constant AC part of our short circuit current and a de as, um, decaying part of DC. So this means um, that we will have a natural current zero right after 10, millisec uh, 10 milliseconds after contact parting time. This is not critical at all, and this can be compared to IC circuit breakers, and IC uh, circuit breakers would be able to fulfill the switching duty here. But if we talk about a generator source short circuit current, so the, the short circuit current is fed from the generator, um, what is actually happening due to the high um, X by R ratio, so the, the inductance of the generator is actually dominating the, the, the resistance, um, will lead or will not only lead to a DC decay, but also to a decay of AC. This means that we can have a delayed current zero, and it is very critical for any kind of circuit breakers that we have a natural current zero um, or that we have a natural current zero right after contact separation. For IC circuit breakers, or IC circuit breakers in this case would definitely fail. For this case, we have the generator circuit breakers, and the generator circuit breakers are type tested to withstand these prolonged arcing times, and they are tested uh, at uh, certified test laboratories, at, uh, for example, the uh, Kema test laboratories in Netherlands. So what are the key takeaways? Why a generator circuit breaker is so important for you when we are talking about generation networks? What you have to know is, of course, we are highly inductive in this case. We have a high X by R ratio, which will influence the arcing time itself. We only have a low earth capacitance, which will influence uh, the, the transient recovery voltage and the rate of rise recovery voltage. We have a short circuit current, uh, usually of high asymmetry. So high asymmetry is always a sign for a delayed current zero. Delayed current zero only appear when having a DC percentage at the time of contact separation bigger than 100%. Then, uh, of course, we have a really high frequency transient recovery voltage. What we can see is 
in the case of current interruption, the transient recovery voltage will oscillate um, at, the, uh, at the rated voltage of the system. And this has also been withstood. Very important for it, but our generator circuit breakers are type tested for it. What I have highlighted in the last minutes is that we have two, two major tasks or two, two major topics of circuit breakers, the IC circuit breaker and the IC IEEE circuit breaker. And back in 2015, um, the IC IEEE committee decided to publish a certain standard which addressed this unique characteristic for the, for the generator circuit breakers. So the IC 62271-100 is not applicable anymore for, for generator circuit breakers because they do not deal with the delayed current zero, they do not de um, deal with this um, transient recovery voltage, with the rate of rise recovery voltage. But this is the task now of the IC IEEE 62271 minus 37 uh, or 13. So it is actually the same structure setup. Um, we have the same references, which is the 62271 minus 1. But we have different test procedures and we have uh, significant differences in the ratings and in the test duties and, of course, in the test parameters. Because as we have seen, um, the requirements and the, the switching duties for generator circuit breakers are much more severe than for IC circuit breakers. And that's why we will only test our generator circuit breakers according to the IEC IEEE standard. And as I've said, the Dash 100 is not applicable anymore and cannot be applied for any generator circuit breaker. So, very important now, um, when we are in the very first beginning, which is the major topic today, um, and we do not know any parameters fr from the network, we have to estimate it, or you want to know which ratings can be expected. Actually, for our generator circuit breaker calculation and the short circuit calculation, we need um, certain requirements and certain uh, input parameters. These are the detailed generator data sheet. We need the single line diagram with the mode of operation. We need a transformer data sheet. And of course, we also need the information about the high voltage grid. So if we do not have this information, what should we do then? And um, especially in the very first beginning where you only need an indication, in this case, we will most or most likely we only got information about a single line diagram, a very simple single line diagram, and maybe the power and the rated voltage of the generator. But there are also other requirements which has to be which have to be um, considered. So this the, maybe you have an IPB connection. You need to um, consider certain uh, reduction factors for altitude, for the temperature. Um, but you also need to know which rated current, which short circuit current can be expected. And that's why we have developed and published on our web page the um, GBS short circuit estimation tool. And we proudly want to present it today to you so that it can be used for you as a really simply rough estimation what can be expected. And of course, uh, most important, with this information, you can directly come to us and you get a first indication price, what you can expect. And for this, I have, we have prepared a video.
Perfect. Now you've got the very first information how to estimate a generator circuit breakers in le uh, less than five minutes. We have introduced you our short circuit estimation tool, but now you may raise the questions, how do we get this information? Are these information based on real type tests? And how do we deal with uh, this, uh, this information? Actually, I want to highlight on two parameters which are really important for, for a generator circuit breaker dimensioning. First of it is it's the subtransient reactance of the generator itself. Um, the subtransient reactance will influence the peak current and it will in influence the breaking current which is needed uh, for the generator circuit breakers. So I have two examples here. The first example is having a uh, uh, subtransient reactance of 30% leading to a peak current of 107 kA. On the other hand, we only see a slightly higher subtransient reactance of two uh, percent, so leading to a um, subtransient reactance of fifteen percent, and we already have a lower peak current by fourteen kA. So for an IEC circuit breaker, this would mean that we can deal with two um, different ratings. So on the one hand, we uh, would recommend a fifty kA breaker. On the other hand, we would only recommend a 40 kA breaker. But for a generator circuit breaker, Sipschir, as we are talking about a higher peak factor the generator circuit breaker are tested with, um, a 40 kA um, generator circuit breaker would be applicable and would be a suitable to fulfill and to withstand the peak current and to fulfill, um, to interrupt the, the short circuit current, which is fed from the generator. Then. Of course, um, the very well-known armature time constant. When the, the armature time constant is mainly dependent for the arcing time. So if we consider also two different examples, we have an, uh, an armature time constant of 200 milliseconds on the one hand side and 300 milliseconds on the other hand side. This could lead to a significant uh, difference in the arcing times itself. So this is actually pretty important, and that's why I want to highlight the importance of getting these real detailed generator data that we can use for our um, internal calculation to provide you the best um, fitting solution for your application. And um, of course, as we can see here, um, for 300 milliseconds, we will only have an arcing time, which is 25 milliseconds, and for 300 milliseconds, we are already in the range of 45 milliseconds for vacuum. That's why only a slightly difference in armature time constant can lead to a huge bigger arcing time. So this uh, generator circuit breaker estimation tool is based on a certain experience we have gained over the last years. Um, we have um, collected a multiple of generator data and put them into one big bubble and one, to one database. What we can see is, in this case, uh, the power versus the, the subtransient re reactance. What we can see is that we have a cluster of um, subtransient reactants up to a power of um, 100 MVA, which is between 15% and 20-25%. And also, um, what we can see is that the subtransient reactance increases uh, when the rated power of the generator uh, increases. But this does not mean that the braking capability of the generator circuit breaker will also, will also be much higher than um, expected. So of course, you will need a higher braking current, but we are confident enough with the Siemens GCB and GBS portfolio that we can fulfill the ratings up to a rating of 500 uh, megawatts. And also, um, we have um, yeah, highlighted the power versus the armature time constant. The armature time constant, as I said, is responsible for, for the arcing time, or mainly responsible for the arcing time. And what we can see is that the uh, armature time constant will increase uh, with the power. Of course, this is mainly dependent on the generator manufacturing process and cannot be changed. So we cannot simply say a certain power has a smaller armature time constant because this is fixed together. 
And then what we can see here is that we can see the relation between the symmetrical breaking current and the DC percentage. So this means that we have, um, of course, uh, between 0 and 20k of symmetrical breaking current, we have a huge cluster of DC percentages up to 120% maybe, um, roughly 120%. And then if we have a higher symmetrical breaking current, this will lead, of course, slightly higher DC percentage up to a value of approximately 130%. It's good to know that our generator circuit breakers are all type tested with a DC percentage of 130%. So what we can give to our customers, what we can give to you, is a portfolio solution, which is completely fulfilling the, type, uh, the, the standards since it is type tested through the latest applicable standard. And then a the last slide I want to show on these data which we have to uh, we have collected is that we have the power versus dc percentage and the power versus the symmetrical breaking current what we can also see is that we have again a huge cluster of the power versus dc percentage up to a power of 100 mva which is also in the range from 100 to 120 percent and then it kind of saturated it saturates um, and it does not increase anymore. So it saturates at the percentage of 130%. So as I've said, all our uh, generator circuit breakers are type tested with 130% of DC percentage. So we can give you a reliable recommendation which generator uh, circuit breaker and which solution from our side is suitable to fulfill your needs. And then we also have the power versus the, uh, the symmetrical breaking current. Again. Of course, if we have one cluster for the DC percentage, we have also one cluster for the symmetrical breaking current. Up to 100 MVA, we have, um, a or we need a symmetrical breaking current for a generator source short circuit current up to 20, 25, 30 um, kilo amps. And then it will increase, it will slightly increase um, to a certain value up to 50 kilo amps. But again, we can give you a perfect solution for your needs. Of course, um, this estimation tool only covers um, a no-load um, calculation because we cannot, or the, the, the estimation tool cannot um, deal with the transient behavior of the short circuit currents. And there we have actually two, we have two exceptions for it. So the first one is a generator and service. So we are talking about overexcited and underexcited um, uh, operating points, where we have um, the, the internal voltage um, smaller or bigger than the, than the applied or the, the rated voltage of the system. And um, of course, it either um, the generator either works as an inductance or as a capacitance. So this special characteristic of a generator and service cannot be covered by this estimation tool. But um, of course, we can um, calculate these special ratings, the, uh, these operating points by using a special software uh, we, uh, we are using. Okay, another exception for this estimation tool is the, the, the topic of false synchronization. False synchronization can be or can happen if we have two different voltages on the on the generator circuit breaker terminal. So let's imagine we have our generator running with its voltage on the one hand side and the generator step up transformer in series with the grid voltage on the other hand of the, the generator circuit breaker. So what will happen then is due to commissioning errors, we, ha we have a wiring mistake uh, at the generator circuit breaker and the, the tripping signal will give a tripping command to the generator circuit breaker to close on a false synchronized uh, voltage. So we have another phase sequence, for example. This will lead to a so-called out of phase current, uh, having a certain and a very special transient characteristic of the out of phase current. 
the outer phase current is uh, mainly dependent on the outer phase angle. The IEC IEEE standard, which is applicable for, for uh, generator circuit breakers, requires a type test with the outer phase angle having 90 degree. Of course, then let's come to an end. I want to give you uh, the conclusion about this estimation tool. Um, the, the, the estimation tool is technically compa uh, compatible, has a technical compatibility with more than 500 entries of real and existing generator data. And it gets more and more uh, every day. So the recommendation you get from this estimation tool is based on fully type tested uh, generator circuit breaker solution and uh, GBS solutions implementing vacuum interrupting technology. And it also covers the simulation experience we have gained over the last uh, multiple years. Of course, the as it is kind of this tool is learning every day. So if we are feeding this tool, what you can expect if you do or if you will get an estimation today and you will have another estimation one year uh, in the future, this can lead to slightly differences, but not because it, it was a false recommendation, but only because it will learn. So you will get a better estimation the longer it uh, or the more frequently it will be used. What I have to say is that this quick estimation tool does not cover and doesn't replace the, uh, the required short circuit analysis, which is required by the standard. But as we are only talking about the indication phase where the input parameters are not clear, um, we can give you a first expectation uh, which um, G, uh, GCB and switchgear ratings will be expected. So if you need or if you go further in your project, you can directly contact us to provide you this detailed simulation, which will then be transformed into the, the most uh, sustainable, the most reliable and a tailor-made solution from the Siemens GBS portfolio. And now I want to welcome back on stage Hong Ubernick for a Q&A session.
nice. Um, thank you very much, Fabian, for the very informative and interesting session so far. And um, I just got a few questions from our audience, and I would like to address them to you. Um, so the first question I got here is, is there any differences in short circuit calculation between SF6 and vacuum? Um, basically, for, for the short circuit calculation itself, there, is, there isn't any difference because um, the, the standard, the IC IEEE standard, which is applicable for generator circuit breakers, does not have any difference or that does not give any difference between SF6 and vacuum. The only th uh, thing we have to consider is, um, of course, the, the mechanics, the mechanical opening time, for example, for, for vacuum and for um, SF6. But this is not um, interrupted medium specific, but uh, only um, circuit breaker specific. So, um, of course, having a different um, kind of mechanical opening time or a longer uh, mechanical opening time will lead to a certain other amount of a uh, breaking current and DC percentage. But the, the standard um, do, does not make any difference between it. And also good to know is, um, is that there's also no specific test requirement given in the standard for vacuum and for SF6. So both switching medium has to fulfill the same ratings, the same test procedures. Okay, nice, interesting so, to hear. Um, um, another question coming in is, are you using open source ATP, AMTP software for your transient simulation as it is required by the IEC IEEE standard? No, we are not using open source software, but we are using a commercial um, software, which is uh, the PSS Netomark. Um, this has the same features as other open source softwares as ATP, EMTP, and where we can do the same calculations as it is required or as it is required by the standard. And also we will get the same output as for ATP and EMTP. All right. Uh, another question regarding the calculation. How do you consider arc voltage in your simulation? Um, the, the arc voltage is, uh, is very important. Um, the IC IEEE standard requires to um, consider the arc voltage characteristic of each uh, circuit breaker in our uh, short circuit calculation. So when we have our contact opening, as I said, there is this arc voltage built up. And we have to take into account this arc voltage in our calculation. Of course, this is different as for SF6. Uh, and that's why it is so really important. Um, as we and then we have also to um, differ between a no-load operation, so the generator is running a no-load without any fault location um, when the generator is in service. And the generator and service. So when we consider, when we calculate the generator and service with the short circuit calculation, um, we also have to use um, at least 300 volts if we do not know the specific arc voltage at the fault location. This is also required by the standard. Um, of course, um, as we know, the the arcing, uh, the armature time constant is mainly dependent on the x by r ratio. So if we have a higher R, which is the, the arc watch at the fault location, will lead to a smaller um, armature time constant, and thus it will lead to a smaller arcing time um, generally. Okay, so the 300 is given by the standard, or is this your, like, is a Siemens specific value? The 300 volts is given by the standard. This is the minimum value. So when we are using the 300 volts as given by the standard, we are still calculating the absolutely worst case. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, can you give more insights on outer phase calculations? Sure. The the, the outer phase. Uh, what I said is that the outer phase is only um, important for the false synchronization. So um, the IEC IEEE standard only requires an, um, a type test with a outer phase angle of ninety degrees. But it there might be some cases where the outer phase angle can be up to 180 degrees. Uh, very important for an out of phase calculation is to, uh, to get the very detail, the full um, information about the whole system. This is the generator. This is also um, the transformer, the high voltage grid. And um, of course, mainly dependent on the out of phase behavior is the inertia constant of the generator. So if we have to calculate the out of phase current, we need to know um, 
actually everything of the whole system. Okay. Um, another question regarding the database. How long have you been building the database? Does it cover specific machine types? Oh, the, the database is, was built initially, I guess, eight years ago. Um, it covers the steam turbine generators, gas turbine generators. It also covers synchronous condensers, uh, generators for hydropower plants. Um, of course, we have a, bra uh, a very detailed overview of all kind of generators which are used uh, for generation applications. Okay, so basically every every dots you showed in the diagrams before, it's like uh, from each and every type of exactly. Let's say um, standard generation exactly. application. Okay, um, is it able to check the DC components also in the estimation tool? Um, unfortunately, this is not possible because to check the DC percentage. Um, we have to know the detailed generator data because uh, the DC percentage is um, calculated due to the transient behavior of the short circuit current. And as I've said, um, the transient behavior cannot be covered by the estimation tool. And that's why if you directly come to us, you contact us with the generator data, we can easily cal uh, calculate um, the DC percentage and present it to you. All right. All right. Um, Another question is, what is the impact of parallel generators at the same bus bar? Is it covered in this estimation tool? This is also not covered by the estimation tool, but it can be uh, simply calculated. Um, important is to know the, the total amount of generated power. So uh, let's imagine we have not only one generator, but maybe two, three or four generators. We have to calculate each short circuit current of each generator. So what you can do, of course, um, which is not so quite um, useful, but uh, to take this estimation tool for each generator mm -hmm. and kind of sum up all short circuit currents. But um, as I said, not really useful, And uh, but it's very important uh, to know for multiple generation feeder to consider really each, each branch, mm -hmm. each generator branch. All right. Is there any limitation when considering parallel generators? Like because I remember the, in this dual code standard they they mention something with the 10 MBA limit. How how is it covered here in this parallel okay. generators? I guess I got you. Um, this is um, the the IC IEEE standard only covers a generating voltage um, above 15 MBA. So if we have a multiple generation network and we have for example four generators. Um, all having only 3 MVA of power, this will be a total power of 12 MVA. So the, the IEC IEEE standard is actually not applicable for, uh, for uh, the small amount of power. This is actually the same um, as having one big generator for 12 MVA or four small generators with 3 MVA. This, these two powers are not covered by the standard. Thank you so far, Fabian, for the questions. Um, we got a few more uh, now in our checkbox, but I think uh, we are out of time right now. And I would really ask you to answer our audience the questions coming in uh, via email. So please, uh, we will come back to you and uh, respond to your questions after the session. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Have a nice day.